Greetings, hello everyone, welcome back to your Lua tutorial. Today we'll be covering the OS module, the operating system module. Now the OS module allows us to work with the operating system, as it kind of suggests. Now some of the things that the operating system can provide us is maybe the time our code takes to execute, or maybe the time since 1970. It will also allow us to get environment variables, which we'll be getting to what that is, and execute commands from the terminal, but not from the terminal, from Lua. Remove and rename files and stuff like that. I will be covering everything. However, if you do want to know more about the OS module, because it is an amazing module in any programming language, then you can probably just go check up for the Lua's documentation and you should be able to find quite a lot of interesting things you can do with it. Perfect, now let's get started. So first, let's try and just get some time. So let's print os.time and this will return the time since 1970. So all of the seconds that has passed since then. As you can see there, that's how many seconds has passed since then up until now. Every second we execute it, it will change. We can also specify a specific date. So from 1970 up until a specific date. So let's say year, or let's break it up into pieces here just to make it easier. Year, and we can make year equal to 2000. And we can make the month equal to let's say the 10th month we can make the day equal to the first you can stop here if you don't want to continue but if you want to then you can even say the hour and then let's make that like 1 p.m and you can say the minutes and let's make that equal to let's say 20 minutes and in the amount of seconds and let's say that should be 10. save that so now it is from 1970 up until the year 2000 or whatever you want to go here with that date so yeah that's about the amount of time that has passed since then up until now in terms of seconds of course you can make it more or less specific should i rather say by doing something like divided by let's say 60 and that i believe should give you the minutes and there you go now you have the minutes because there is 60 seconds in a minute so yeah now let's say you have, let, let's put this in a variable. So let's go local, local, yeah, past or something. Put that inside of there. Now let's say you want to work out the time since this past time here up until now. One way to do it is let's just go print here and say os.time minus past. This is one way to do it. <clears throat> as you can see here but there's also another way to do this and it's built into that so we can just say dot diff time and you can pass in os dot time which is right now and past and it's built into lua and it will just give you the same or not the same result because seconds has passed since then but it will give you the same sort of output but it's built exactly for that equation cool now let's say you want to get the current date so you can just say os.date as easy as that and you can get the current date friday july 23rd it is 7 p.m and it's 2021 that's pretty cool so that is how you can get the date pretty simple now next up we can get to the environment so this can be things like the, your environment variables on your computer. For example, and I believe most of this should be the same on Windows, but I can't really confirm that since I don't use Windows and same on Mac. Anyhow, so dollar home, and if we can just echo home. Now this is an environment variable. It specifies where my home folder is. When I open up my file manager, as you can see here, it opens up in Netsu, but if I do this, you can see there's that, which is just a slash, it's root, home Netsu. If I go here, as you can see, it's home Netsu. So you can use this 
dollar home to know where the user's home folder is which as you can see here there's mine same with if you use echo and then user and this will echo the user that's using this pc as you can see they're netsu if i say who am i it will say i'm netsu because that's my username on this computer now to use these environment variables or to get them in lua you can just let's go print here and of course you can store them sort of a variable if you want and you just say os dot get env and here you can just say what environment variable we want to get for example if we want home here we can just say home save that and if i were to run this lua file uh, you see we get the same result as up here if we want to get user then we'll get the same result as with the, what we got here I don't know too many environment variables, so I unfortunately I can't show you more environment variables, but you could probably go search up environment variables for your system. Next up, we have a way to rename and remove files. So let me open up my file manager in this folder. As you can see here, let's say I want to create a new file and let's call it uh, myfile.txt can be anything i'm just gonna connect myfile.txt just for simplicity now here i want to say at least i want to rename the file i can just say os.rename i can say which file should be renamed in this case myfile.txt should be renamed so here we can say myfile.txt and to what it should be renamed. So let's say new name.js. So we change the extension and everything. Save that. And if we run this Lua file, then now we get new name.js instead of new file.txt. So we renamed that file. So that's one way to work with files. Another way we can is we can remove it. So instead of rename, we can say remove. And we can just pass in the first one here, new name.js. Run this, and now it is gone. It's no longer here because we deleted it. Let's do a fun experiment. Let's let's say main.lua because I, I just want to see what's going to happen if we delete the file we're calling this command from. Uh, okay, so nothing interesting happened, it seems. Yeah, nothing interesting happened, unfortunately, but it would have been kind of cool. Okay, now we have our main.lua here, and yeah, it's empty because we deleted a previous one. But that's how I can remove a file and rename it. Now, what I'm about to show you should never, ever, ever actually be used, unless you have no other choice. It is executing commands from inside of here, but executing terminal commands. So os.execute. And now we can execute commands we could have executed here. So if I say who am I, and we already know we can just get the environment variable user, but if I say that, then we get Netsu because that is if I say who am I. So this directly pastes this piece of code into the terminal. Now, there are two reasons why this right here is bad practice. First reason is, if you type your code wrong in here, instead of just using something that's built in for you already, then you could possibly destroy your entire system. For example, if I were to say rm-rf slash, if I were to execute this inside of here, Currently, it won't really do anything because uh, it will need root permissions because protection from Linux. But if I were to execute this here, instead of here, then my whole system can be destroyed immediately. Like, no kidding, it can, boop, it's gone. So that is why this is so dangerous. Because let's say I just wanted to remove a file, let's say, slash TMP, because if I remove that, my system won't break. Let's say I want to do that, but I forgot to add that. That is one reason, because it's very, very dangerous. The other reason is, 
something you execute here won't execute on a different platform per se. See how this. This is how you clear the terminal in Windows. So clearing the terminal. So what I've been doing like this, that's how you clear the terminal. Or although on Linux it is clear. So you can just clear or you can press Ctrl and L. But on Windows it is CLS. You'll notice that I didn't have that command. And on Windows you don't have the clear command because you have CLS. So if we were to execute this Lua file, as you can see it can't find that command. It doesn't know what it is. But if I were to say clear, then it will clear my terminal. So this is another reason because one thing type here won't work on another system. And you might be telling yourself, but okay, I didn't have to worry about that because I'm just going to code for Windows or I'm just going to code for Linux or just going to code for Mac. Problem is, if you ever in the future decide, okay, no, I want to code for X platform as well and not just this platform right here. Then you have to go everywhere where you said execute and you have to find a workaround because you didn't do it before. So just never, ever, ever, ever use this unless you have to. And then let's say we want to time our code. It is fairly simple. Up here, we can say local start. This will be our start time. And we can just make that equal to os.clock. And this will start a timer or it will kind of like save a snapshot of when this happened. Then let's say I do a for loop here. And here I can just maybe say, uh, I, I don't have to do anything. I just can just maybe go like local x is equal to 10 and then I can just end. Okay, and in here I can just say print and then we can say os.clock minus start. And this will give us the amount of time that has passed since this up until this. So it will count or calculate how long this takes. This is great if you want to time your code. So if we do that, as you can see, we get this. This isn't seven seconds or seven minutes. It's actually a really, really, really small value. We'll see if we were to bring this up to, let's say, this amount, which is what I believe one million. So if we run this for one million times, as you can see, it took 0 0.02 milliseconds. If we add another zero or not two zeros here. Let's see how long it takes now. It took 2.29 seconds to execute. So yeah, that is how you can time your code. So boom, boom. Now the next one is if you want to exit the program, os.exit. And this is if you don't care, you can just say os.exit. So let's say here you say you create a for loop. So for and you can say if i is equal to 5 then and then we can just os.exit end and here you can just also end and here you can maybe like print and we can print i this is one way to do it so once it reaches this value right there it will exit the program so boom as you see, when once it got to five, it's exiting the program. It doesn't continue. If we were to uncomment that, or if we were to comment that or uncomment it, they will go up until 10. And that is basics of the OS module. There's a lot more you can do. And I do recommend you do go search up more of it if you are interested in learning more about the OS module, because it is a very useful module. And I'll see you all again in the next tutorial.